All right. Well, we're going to get going. Hopefully you got some uh, good things written down. I know that I did. Um, and just kind of as an FYI for you guys today, it is Danette Grant's birthday. So make sure that everyone pulls out their phone and shoots her a text message or send her an email or something and let Danette know a uh, happy birthday. I will never forget Danette's birthday because it's the same day as my wife's. So today's my wife's birthday as well. So <laughs> I always remember Danette's birthday too. So anyway, uh, hey, hopefully you got some good gratitudes or intentions. Would love to have you throw those in the chat box. I know I ask for that uh, all the time, but uh, commit to it. If you'll throw it in the chat box, uh, you will uh, more likely to achieve it. So uh, in fact, actually part of where I wanna talk about today is um, I, I actually want to talk about that self-confidence formula that we just went through. So I'm going to pull that back up here on the screen for just a second while we talk. <laughs> wow, look at this. We got, uh, hang on. <laughs> let me get this, wait, let me get the screen down here. We got a visitor today. Look at this. <laughs> the Easter Bunny. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, where's, where's the eggs? <laughs> we got the Easter Bunny coming to say hi. I love it. In the middle of morning ascent. <laughs> all right. Yeah, all right. Well, if that doesn't throw me off, nothing will. <laughs> all right. So here's what we're going to do. So let me pull up this self-confidence formula. That was awesome. Uh, so um, here's what I want to talk about for a minute is we go through this self-confidence formula every morning. And, and, you, and at the very end of it, you see that Napoleon Hill has recommended that you should um, repeat, or excuse me, I, I'm so thrown off now from the <laughs> Easter Bunny coming in, commit it to memory, and then repeat it out loud once a day with full faith that it will gradually influence your thoughts and actions. Well, so here's what I want to talk about. So I want to share with you guys a story about this principle. So the principle of this self-confidence formula is we started off by saying here, first, I know that I have the ability to achieve the object of my definite purpose in life. So you have the ability to achieve whatever that definite purpose is in your life. So just know that first off, no matter what you think, because I know how it goes, that we think, well, everyone else has the ability to do it, but I don't have the ability. So know that you do have the ability. But here's what I wanted to spend most of the time talking about is the number two on here. So it says, second, I realize the dominating thoughts of my mind will eventually reproduce themselves into outward physical action and gradually transform themselves into physical reality. See, the dominating thoughts of your mind are going to reproduce themselves. They're going to show up. So the whole reason that, that that book that Napoleon Hill wrote of Think and Grow Rich is about what you think about. The dominating thoughts of your mind are going to eventually reproduce themselves. It is going to happen. So I want to share with you actually a story about that that I experienced with this just this last weekend. And um, we were talking this morning um, before we started here about, uh, about baseball, which, by the way, like... I, Every day that we get closer to opening day of baseball is a good day for me. And so we are getting really close to the opening weekend now, I guess is kind of more what they call it, but then opening day of baseball. Well, I'm so excited about it. Well, my, I have a 12 year old and my 12 year old had a baseball tournament last week down in St. George. And so I want to share with you a, a quick story about him and how this principle of the dominating thoughts of your mind eventually reproducing themselves. So keep that piece in mind as we go through and talk about this. Well, so let me give you the background on it. I have been a baseball fan for my whole life and I have three boys. My oldest son is, uh, how old is he? 25 coming up on 26, I guess. My youngest is 12. And then I have one in the middle there that is, uh, how old is he? 20. So, so I have a 12 year old, a 20 year old and 25 year old sons. Well, because of that, all three of my boys played baseball. All three of them were pretty good at baseball. And the youngest basically just grew up with a baseball bat in his hand and a ball. Well, as a result of that, as a young kid, I would take him to the park and I would pitch to him. 
So I would throw a uh, baseball to him and he would hit and he got pretty good at it. Well, we decided to enter him into kid pitch baseball when he was seven. And so he's seven years old. He gets up to bat. And to that point, the only pitches he had ever seen were from me or one of his older brothers at the park. And we have pretty good control of throwing the, the ball. So we didn't hit him anywhere. And so he gets in, up to bat in a game and he just starts smashing the ball as a seven-year-old doing really, really well hitting the ball. Well, as you would expect, not all seven-year-olds have the same amount of control in throwing a baseball. And so as a result of that, one day he's standing up there, he's ready to hit. And all of a sudden he gets hit by the baseball and the look on his face, I will never forget because he turned to look at me like, what is this? Like that, th this has never happened to me before in my life that he had gotten hit. Well, the, his next at bat, as you can guess, he stands up there and as the pitcher throws the pitch, he steps back out of the way because he's worried about getting hit. Well, so that was when he's seven, he's now 12. And to some extent, he is still struggling with that concept. And what I have been trying to teach him is this self-confidence formula that the dominating thoughts of our mind will eventually reproduce themselves. So, so here's the point of this. So now we're down in this tournament in St. George. It's our first one that we have been to this year. And he gets up to bat and, and, and I've been trying to work with him on this, the dominating thoughts of your mind. Well, we had the opportunity, and I think I shared this a few weeks ago, so I'll be quick in sharing this. But we had the opportunity of having John Buck, who was a catcher for the Kansas City Royals for a number of years, played for a number of other professional major league teams as well. Well, he, he came to one of our practices and told us about a time he was struggling hitting and how his mental coach, which, by the way, professional athletes have a mental coach. So if you think you don't need a coach, you're wrong. But he uh, said that his mental coach had him in Chicago, walk the streets of Chicago, saying to himself, I hit fastballs middle away to the right center gap. I hit fastballs middle away to the right center gap. Well, my son's left handed. So I had him doing the opposite of that. I hit fastballs middle away to the left center gap. And I just had him repeating it over and over because the dominating thoughts of our mind will eventually reproduce themselves into physical action. So I have him repeating that over and over again. And we have done that for a couple of months. He gets up to bat in the game. And as he gets up to bat, um, he strikes out and he strikes out looking. Now, the reason he struck out looking is because rooted deeper in his mind is this fear of getting hit by the ball. And, and of course, as luck would have it, the very first team we played had probably the fastest pitcher that we saw the entire tournament tournament and so he sees these pitches coming in fast he's scared so I keep trying to work with him on that well as a result of that he struggled at the plate pretty much the entire tournament well as I mentioned he's left-handed and he's a pitcher and for whatever reason and, and I personally I don't know that I believe that he should be but he tends to be our pitcher that will pitch in the championship game now he, he had pitched one inning prior to the championship game, which we made it to. And in that one inning, he did okay. I would just say he did okay. Well, so as a result, though, because of how much he struggled at the plate, I was really worried about him pitching in the championship game, which the head coach had said, we're going to have him pitch. And I was like, I'm not sure that's such a good idea because he's been struggling at the plate. And a lot of times, we will let a struggle in one area of our life carry over to another area of our life. Meaning if you're struggling in your business, it may carry over to your relationships. Or if you're struggling in your relationships, it can carry over to your business. Well, knowing that I was a little fearful of my son pitching because I'm concerned that he's going to go out there on the mound and fail. And so he, because he already, after every at bat, whether he would strike out or ground out, he would come into the dugout and sit down and I could just see in his face that the dominating thoughts of his mind at that moment were, and forgive my, what I'm going to say, but I suck. And it's basically what I could see in his mind going on. So I would sit down and try to encourage him. That it's going to be okay. Well, 
before the championship game. So we make it to championship game. The coach says, Mace, you got the, you've got the ball, you're pitching the game. And he takes the mound. And, and before he does, I grab him and I said, don't let what's happening at the plate roll over to what you're going to do on the mound. You have been a great pitcher. Trust yourself. You've got this. You can do it. Well, he gets up there and he starts to pitch and he does actually pretty good the first inning and doesn't give up any runs. I think had uh, a maybe I don't even know if he got a hit. A couple ground balls, pop flies that were caught. But um, I'm like, OK, good. We're off to a good start. The next inning he goes out, gives up a hit and then strikes two kids out and, and gets out of the inning. So now being the dad, which um, I actually happen to be one of the coaches and I'm the one who calls the pitches. And I apologize to you guys that are not baseball people. You're probably like, whatever. But, but I'm the one calling the pitches for the game. So we get into the, after the second inning, I go to the head coach and, and I said to him, hey, so who are we going to pitch next? Because in my mind, I'm trying to be the coach, but I'm also being the dad who is worried about his son's mental attitude towards how he's done hitting this tournament and I'm worried that I don't want to see him fail on the mound so I I'm going to the coach essentially trying to convince him let's put somebody else into pitch let's let somebody else uh, pitch the rest of the game now I didn't straight out say that I just said who are we going to next who's who's our next pitcher and the head coach said uh I don't know we're Mason's pitching as long as he can and I was like oh, in my mind I'm thinking oh no like this is for a dad not a good thing but then he goes back out into the next inning and in the third. Now, the, the piece I've left out of this is our bats are on fire. So at this point, the score is I, I don't remember exactly. It's 10 to nothing or 12 to nothing, something like that. So our bats are on fire. So I'm not as nervous. But he goes back out there on that inning and he walks a kid. And I'm like, oh, I knew it. We should have got him out. And then the next kid comes up and hits the ball and we have an error. So now you got two kids on base. Well, the next kid comes up, who is the kid who um, this this team brought in from San Diego. And as a 12 year old, this kid's like six, two and 200 pounds, like he's huge. And and, and now to keep in mind, I'm the one I'm, I remember I said I was going to do a quick story. It's no longer <laughs> a quick story. Sorry. But I um, I'm the one calling the pitches and we had gotten this kid to ground out before. And so I'm thinking, OK, I got to try to approach pitching to this kid the same way that I can get him out because he is a good hitter and you can tell that he's a big kid. So uh, I call a, um, a fastball inside and he smashes it, just smashes it, but it was foul. So when it's a foul ball, that's just a long strike is all we would call that. So it was still just a, a strike. Well, so now I get two strikes on the kid and I think, okay, I'm going to go with a change up away, which I, Again, I apologize if you don't get all what I'm saying, but I, so we call a change up away and this kid hits it. And as he hits it, he screams out, get out of here ball. And the fence we were playing on was 285 feet away. And this uh, 12 year old kid hit a home run. So it's now got a three runs. And I'm like, I knew we should have pulled my son out at that point. Well, here's the good news because the dominating thoughts of his mind in terms of baseball and pitching specifically are that I am the best. I own the mound. He then struck out the next two kids to get out of the inning. So as the dad, I went back to the coach and was saying again, okay, let's go to somebody else. And the coach said, Nope, Mason's finishing this whole game. And, and so then, so to wrap up the story, he goes out and strikes out three kids in a row the next inning to uh, end the game. So we won the championship game 17 to three it was awesome. But here's the point. So I apologize for the long story, but here's the point. The dominating thoughts of his mind about hitting stopped him from hitting. But the dominating thoughts of himself as a pitcher and how good he is had him control that game. Yes, we gave up a hit that, that and by the way, after the kid hit the home run, my son looked at me and was like, no, you should have called a curveball. Now he. He didn't say yell that, but I could read that. Was, you know, he gave me the sign two is curveball. And he's like, dad, two, like you should have called a curveball. So uh, anyway, so it's my fault that the kid hit a home run, of course. Right. But what are the dominating thoughts of your mind? That's what I want you to think about is, do you have scenarios where your dominating thoughts of your mind are holding you back? Now, I want to tie that to prospecting 
So in terms of our prospecting, which FYI, Judy is running a prospecting school today, uh, today and tomorrow on the third floor. For you guys that are in the Salt Lake area, it is not too late if you want to jump in on that. So just show up on the third floor, talk to Judy. She can let you know what you need, need, to, need to do to get signed up. But what are the dominating thoughts of your mind when it comes to prospecting? Do you believe you're good at it? Do you believe you're going to set appointments? See, so, so I've got two people here in the room that are going to be in that today. And I would just ask you to, what are the dominating thoughts? See, take that same concept that I was talking about with John Buck of I hit fastballs middle away to right center and apply that to I set appointments with every person I talk to on the phone. Something like that. Create something that is I set appointments when I call, make phone calls. Something that creates that in your mind that you're going to do it. So if you will do that, see how it will change. So I, I just want to invite you to throughout the day today, pay attention to what are the dominating thoughts of your mind? What are the things that you believe about yourself, which probably aren't really true? See, back to my son on hitting. He actually is a great hitter. If, if he is in the batting cages when he's not worried about getting hit by a pitch, he's an awesome hitter. So I'm trying to work with him to get to that change. Well, that's what you have to do. Change the dominating thoughts of your mind to be when I call my SOI, they give me referrals. So I, I just looked over and saw Brian Noel's name, which made me think of SOI. So I'm like, hey, when you're calling your SOI, have that belief. When I call my sphere of influence, they give me referrals. I get listings. See, in today's market, if you can get listings, you're going to win. So have that, that be the dominating thought of your mind is I am successful. I will set appointments. I will get listings. I get transactions closed. See, because the dominating thoughts of your mind are going to eventually reproduce themselves into outward physical action. All right, guys. Sorry that I spent so much on that. Uh, I intended to spend a little more time on prospecting, but um, just work on that today. Work on the idea of you are good at setting appointments and people say yes when you talk to them and then see what happens. So as usual, I just want to encourage you, if, if this makes a difference, you see some success from it today as you're prospecting, shoot me a text, uh, send me an email, let me know. I love to hear about the successes that you have and just believe in yourself. You have the ability to achieve the definite purpose of your life. You do. You might not think you do, but you do. So go out and make it happen. All right, let's wrap it up with our closing affirmations. Hopefully I didn't bore you too much with my stories of baseball, but thanks for humoring me. And the good news is I couldn't see if you walked out of the room or anything. So except for John Aubrey, I noticed he wasn't in front of his camera. No. <laughs>